Item descriptions in Risk of Rain 2 are often completely wrong, and I'm not talking about those weirdly ambiguous non-descriptions that some items have, and his music was electric. Oh thank you, very informative. <laughs> I'm not even sure that's a complete sentence, let alone an item description, but that's not what we're going to be talking about today. Instead we're going to take a look at a hidden mechanic that influences almost half the items in the game. A mechanic so powerful that understanding it can mean the difference between god runs and horrible runs that make you spoil your diapy. This mechanic isn't referenced anywhere in the game, despite being a fundamental part of it. In this video, we're going to talk about proc coefficients and proc chains. Now, if you think you already know what these are, keep watching, because I'm willing to bet there's some stuff in here you don't already know. I aim to explain these mechanics and clear up some really common misconceptions about them. Now, first of all, don't let the term proc coefficient scare you away. Video games are supposed to be fun, and the term proc coefficient is very unfun. So if you're picturing a whole bunch of charts and graphs, don't do that, get that out of here, because that's not what this is. The term proc coefficient refers to an invisible number that determines the likelihood of an item's effect occurring. Every ability in the game has a proc coefficient ranging from 0 to 1, with 0 meaning the item can never proc, and 1 meaning the item procs at its usual rate. The in-game descriptions for items don't take proc coefficients into account, and oftentimes are incorrect. For example, the description for the tri-tip dagger states, 10% chance to bleed an enemy for 240% base damage. That 240% is a little bit confusing, but basically what that's saying is one stack of bleed will deal 240% base damage over a 3 second duration. But what's omitted from this description is the proc coefficient. Both the 10% chance and duration are multiplied by this invisible value. Sometimes this doesn't matter if the ability in question has a 1.0 proc coefficient. For example, Commando's primary has a 1.0 proc coefficient, so the 10% times 1 is 10%, and 3 seconds times 1 is 3 seconds, so in this instance the in-game description is correct. But now let's look at this on Rex, whose primary has a 0.5 proc coefficient. 10% times 0.5 is 5%, and 3 seconds times 0.5 is 1.5 seconds. This means to cap bleed on Rex, you need to have 20 tri-tips instead of 10, despite the game telling you otherwise. For a full breakdown of the proc coefficient of everything in the game, my friend Cap made a great video on it. You can also go to riskofresources.com, a new website developed to make this information as accessible as possible. More info on that at the end of the video. Links to both will be in the description. Now, despite being an invisible mechanic, proc coefficients affect nearly everything in the game, from ATG trigger chance, scorpion debuff chance, and even brilliant behemoth explosion radius. Virtually any time you pick up an on-hit item that gives a chance in percentage, it's almost always multiplied by the ability's proc coefficient, with one exception, critical strike chance. Lensmaker glasses will always give you an additional 10% crit chance, whether you're playing commando, rex, multi, goku, doesn't matter, this item will always work the same. And listen, I don't wanna see any comments saying, this grandpa has dementia, he forgot crit works differently on railgunner. None of that, what a rotten thing to say. Now, in addition to every ability having a proc coefficient, many items also have proc coefficients. On screen now are all of them. This list can also be found on riskofresources.com. Since items have proc coefficients, it means items can chain off each other and form what's called a proc chain. The reason this is powerful is because proc chains deal total damage, which just means damage is multiplied. So for example, say you have an ATG that deals 300% damage and a charge perforator that deals 500% damage. If you chain an ATG off a charge perforator, it will multiply the damage values together for 1500% damage. Pretty straightforward. A couple things to note here though. Proc chains can occur in any order, but the same item cannot be triggered twice in the same chain. You wouldn't be able to fire an ATG into a churf back into an ATG. It's against the rules. You can also trigger two different effects with one attack, and this will cause the chain to split. You can think of this as a proc tree. Additionally, while a proc chain can occur in any order, it's heavily influenced by the item's proc coefficient, with higher proc coefficients typically coming at the beginning of a proc chain. To give you an example, say you have a ukulele and an ATG. Assuming the attack used has a 1.0 proc coefficient, the chance to proc a ukulele is 25%, ATG has a base 10% chance to fire, multiplied by the uke's 0.2 proc coefficient. So the chance of firing an ATG off a uke is 2%. The overall chance of this chain occurring is 0.5%. Conversely, if the ATG comes first, it has a 10% chance to fire, and it retains a 1.0 proc coefficient. So the chance of landing a uke afterward is 25%. The overall probability of this chain occurring is 2.5%, five times more likely than if the U came first. 
Now you may have noticed 0.5 and 2.5 are both pretty low numbers. And keep in mind, this is only with two items. Adding more items to the chain would make these numbers exponentially smaller. So does that mean proc chains are too rare to be viable? Well, not necessarily, because this explanation doesn't take everything into account. You can't just take all of your proc items and multiply the damage values together. That's not really how it works from a probability standpoint. Here's what you need to understand. The odds of one given chain occurring are relatively low, but the odds of any chain occurring are much higher. In the example where we had an ATG and a ukulele, there are only two possible proc chains. You can either proc an ATG into a uke or proc a uke into an ATG. Only two ways you can chain these items. But now, if we add in a molten perforator, that brings the total number of possible chains from 2 to 12. If you add in a charged perforator, the possible number of chains jumps from 12 to 54 meaning there are 54 possible permutations of two or more of these items proccing off each other, each with varying probabilities of occurring. The chances of a specific chain occurring is low, but the chances of any of these 54 chains occurring is much higher. Another way you can think about this is the chance to proc an ATG is 10%, but the chance to proc at least one of these four items is about 45% or 1 in 10 to almost 1 in 2. This was determined by calculating the odds of nothing proccing. So 0.75 times 0.9 times 0.9 times 0.9. This is also how you calculate the odds for your 57 leaf clovers. This item increases your luck by one, and it just adds another roll for a positive outcome. Now one of the reasons this is so good is because it does the reroll for every part of the chain. This will not only make proc chains longer, but more common as well. Clovers affect nearly every chance-based item, with the exception of tougher times. Uh, Gore's Tome, Crit, Bleed, Bandolier, Lost Ears, basically everything else works with Clover. So this item isn't only for proc chain builds. Something to be aware of though is the fact Clover depends on items for its effect to be useful. Early on, if you only have two proc chain items, adding a third item to the chain will oftentimes do more for you than Clover. But once you have four or more chain items, Clover will be much more valuable. While Clover can be overpowered, it isn't always. So if you find yourself in the bazaar on stage two or three and you see a Clover soup, you need to ask yourself if the long-term payoff of Clover outweighs the immediate impact of your current items. Items like Bands provide a consistent damage source that is effective at any point in the run. Sacrificing them for a Clover may benefit you long-term, it also may not. It's a gamble, and it really depends on your goal. If your goal is to fight Mythric Stage 6, you can expect much less value from Clover than if you loop your run. On the flip side, Purity is the opposite of a Clover and reduces your luck by one. Again, it's like adding in a second die, but this time it takes the worst of both rolls. This has a pretty drastic effect. If you have one tri-tip dagger, it takes your bleed chance from 10% to 1%. Now for a proc chain or bleed build, purity would be terrible, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a terrible item. Proc chains are not the end all be all of damage. They're great late game, and if you like to loop or play command, proc chains will really shine. But the big issue with them is there's a lot of setup involved. The vast majority of proc items are rare, either green, red, or yellow. And for this reason, proc chain builds can be very hard to come across within the first five stages. Stuff like bands and bleed are much more consistent early on. Announcement time. All right, so Risk of Rain 2 has a lot of mechanics. And beyond YouTube, the only real resource for players is the wiki. And I wanna be clear, I think the wiki is great for the most part, there has been quite a bit of misinformation on there in the past, and while I think they've done a pretty good job cleaning it up, there still is some misinfo on there, and there's just a lot of stuff that's out of date. Riskofresources.com is a new website designed to give the most accurate information possible. Everything on here was tested, and there's zero ads. The first part of this website is actually rolling out as this video is being uploaded, and if you go there right now, you can see a list of all proc coefficients in the game. There will be more added on in the future, but this is part one. This website was developed by my friend Sulky Optimism. Big shout out to him. He volunteered to do this for some reason, and I'm very grateful. But that does it for the video. If you learned something, hit the grand fan button. If you thought the video was bad and I should be ashamed of myself, leave a dislike. If you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you, but I'm more active on Discord, so feel free to message me there. And remember to check out Cap's video. I'm not just promoting him because he's my friend. This is genuinely a really good video and I think you guys will find it helpful. All right, I'm off to go fishing with my grandson. Hot off for now.